Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Entropia Content. And I'm just going to move my thing over there. Notice I wasn't even centered properly. <laughs> yeah, so I hope everyone enjoyed the little time travel episode I had. It was kind of ironic. I got really mad because uh, after I released the episode, I found out who was a McCormick and a few other people on the Facebook page pointed it out that it wasn't a recent sale for Monria. That it was actually one that happened way in the past. <laughs> Just like my time travel quote had been hinting at. No, I, don't, I think some people thought that maybe I did the whole time travel thing theme on purpose because uh, I already knew that Monria sale happened a long time ago. But kind of yes and no. I knew that the Monria sale happened a long time ago, but I thought this new one was a new sale. Like I didn't even check to see if it was the same buyer or not. No, no, it's flying to the space station. I fucking smashed up into aliens. So now I gotta repair my ship. That's the one disadvantage to my trick about having low TT value going for pirates. It also backfires when you're trying to fight aliens. Oh, for a second I thought I had no welding wire. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I hate I always hit the, the use tool button. And what does it do? It fucking picks up the vehicle. They really got to fucking switch the buttons around in the game. Like, I don't know, like, the one thing that I used to love the most about Entropia was the fucking solid controls. I love the controls in Entropia. I'd never played a game with better controls. What do you know? They fucking tried to fix it. They updated it with new controls. Fucking can't stand the new controls. So it's like they took the one thing I like most about the game and got rid of it. <laughs> Sons of bitches! <laughs> No, it's okay. I'm, I'm gradually starting to get used to the new controls. Fuck. <laughs> no, it's probably for the best here. They say when you, you adapt to new things, it actually makes your brain stronger. Like if you get caught up in doing the same thing too much all the time, you, you age mentally faster to the point where you'll have severe dementia. <laughs> okay. Now, can I fucking use this thing without it picking up the ship? There we go. Oh my god! I fucking can't repair the ship because of the fucking stupid button controls. Fuck, that pisses me off. Like, I have my mouse set up so that the auto-use click button is on the mouse. But, when I try to use it with these fucking new controls, it won't fucking auto-repair. It'll just pick up the fucking ship. Fucking who programmed these buttons? Are they a fucking crack addict? Like, really, did you even try the buttons before you switched them? Fuck. <laughs> now, you can tell it's early in the morning. I haven't had breakfast yet. I'll try to chill. Fuck. Well, just sit here fucking hitting the button manually because the fucking auto click button picks up vehicles. Fuck. <laughs> okay, before I have a fucking ulcer, <laughs> I'm gonna fly down to Calypso. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't see any pirates on the way. <laughs> now, I haven't hit the vape yet this morning, so that could be another reason. Notice my voice is probably a little bit clearer. <laughs> now one trick I used to do for podcasting is I wouldn't vape or do any weed for like a couple days so I could get my voice back to mint condition. Holy fuck! Oh my god! I don't know what the fuck is with the game lately. I'm like trying to control the ship and all the fucking buttons are seized. So it's turning in all fucking directions on its own. Fucking piece of shit. Yeah, look at that. I can't stop the ship from fucking turning. What the fuck is going on? Oh my fucking Christ. I can't fucking stop the ship from turning. Fuck. Ugh. Fucking smash my keyboard. I don't know if it's the keyboard or the fucking game. God sakes, that fucking pisses me off. 
And what do you know? Fucking Monria is too fucking dark for me to see it to fucking land. God sakes and fucking mind arc. Could you fix the controls? Could you fucking make the space station a color you can see in space? Like, fuck. I swear to God, like... Who the hell was working at Mindark and was like, Hey, we're making a space station. Why don't we make it black so that no one can fucking see it? God. Oh my god. Like, I can't even fucking do anything. I have to restart the fucking game because I can't fucking control the fucking ship. Oh man, that fucking pisses me off so much. It's like, piece of shit. I don't even want to fucking play this game. God, I don't know, Mind Arc. You get all this fucking cash from people. You can't even get the fucking game to work properly. Like, could you focus maybe on less fucking selling deeds and fucking fi fixing the fucking game so it fucking works? God. All right, I'm going to reboot and restart that whole fucking thing again. I don't know how much ped I wasted flying around in space because I can't fucking control the ship. God. Just switch the fucking controls back to the way they used to be, Mind Arc. You sons of bitches! <laughs> okay, I think I've relaxed a bit now. Holy fuck. <laughs> now, I think usually when this control issue happens, I can hit escape and it'll reset the controls back. But fucking not this time. This time it was fucking seized to the point where I can't even fucking move. No, this happened to me once before, is when I was on to Google Documents, and I had a fucking save file of some text that was extremely rare. Like, I'm talking this text used to be on post on a website, but I copied and pasted it all into Google Docs in case someone took the website down. I was like, oh, thank God, then I can have a copy saved on Google Docs. So one day, I'm opening up my computer, and I'm like, hey, time to open my computer, see what I can fucking find. And what do you know, I'd say, hey, I'll read that text file I haven't read in a while. Because it's been removed online, and I went to the internet way back time machine. It didn't fucking save the old version. So this fucking copy of text I had on Google Docs was the only fucking way you could get it was from this Google Docs. Every other version, gone. So I'm like, okay, this is good. I have it saved in Google Docs. Today I'll open it and read it. What do you know, I open up the document. I fucking start scrolling through looking, oh yeah, it's looking great, looking great. Then I fucking click on the page to like start reading. What happens? The fucking icon on the page just starts going whoosh, 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 whoosh. And what is it doing? Deleting all the fucking text. I'm like, holy fuck, here's this goddamn fucking text that I needed to save really crucially. And I open Google Docs and it just fucking starts deleting it all. And what do you know? Google Docs has this little feature built into it where it automatically saves everything you've done. So what do you know? All the fucking deletions of my text file, it's saving them. And I'm like, oh, like, like Microsoft Word. It has this little feature called a back button or undo. I'm like, surely Google Docs has this feature. Nope, they don't. So you just fucking delete an entire text file, and for God's sakes, I can't undo it. <laughs> now what happened was, is I spilt a little bit of pop that day on my fucking keyboard, and what do you know, the back delete button was sticking. So as soon as I fucking logged in, it just started deleting the document. <laughs> oh God. Now, what I should do is petition to Mindark and be like, Hey, Mindark, you're fucking stupid controls. I can't even control my ship. And I lost a whole bunch of ped. So could you, like, ship some ped to my fucking account? You sons of bitches. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love Mindark. As much... Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I got a hold of McCormick. He was one of the first people that corrected the Mon Monrio video that it actually happened a long time ago. And I'll try to finish correcting what I, or finish what I was saying. Like McCormick, I wanted to get him on the show. Here look, I'm not touching any fucking controls. Don't stick, you sons of bitches. Can't even be holding over, it'll fucking stick. Alright, see? Ship is good for now. 
Can I fly fucking straight without it controlling itself? Jesus. Okay, relax. Relax. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm flying towards Calypso. <laughs> anyway, so I tried to get McCormick to be on the show, but he hasn't responded to any of my questions asking if he'll come on the show. I think maybe he's a little bit worried, but I'm, like, I'm not going to be a mean host or anything. As much as I love and hate Mindark, I can sort of relate to both aspects of it, so I think I could be okay with talking to McCormick. I won't get too hardcore into bashing Mindark. I know you guys probably won't want to hear a whole episode just bashing Mindark, so... If I get McCormick on, I won't let him just bash everything. I'll try to just stand up for my mind arc as much as I make fun of them at the same time. <laughs> that whole castle story was epic. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I've had real estate <laughs> sales go the same way. Where I bought property and wanted to fix it up and resell it. And it turned out I ended up losing way more and I couldn't even refix it. <laughs> So I'm still selling a property if anyone wants it. <laughs> the only advantage it has is it's fucking haunted worse than fucking poltergeist. That's the one thing I was thinking. Even though I fucking fucked up, got a haunted house, it's fucking condemned. Ooh, this weed tastes good. Yeah, this fucking government Pure Suns Farm stuff is getting harsh fast. Like the first day I opened it and vaped it, it was still pretty smooth. But now when I'm vaping it, it's like, oh, tastes like fire going down. <laughs> I might have to add a little bit of moisture to the jar. Maybe that's what it is. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm going to try to get McCormick on. We'll fucking talk Mind Arc and talk Entropia. If he's willing to do it. He hasn't said yes to it yet, so it's probably a good chance he won't, but just on the assumption that he will, <laughs> that'd be sick. Oh yeah, I should explain the Monrea shit a bit more. What happened was, is I was logging into Facebook, and then it's like, news, the news story of the day was a new article from Monrea. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to check out this new article. I'm like, I'd heard of a sale in the past, I was like, oh, maybe this is a new sale, because it was fucking tanking. So then I open the article and it has today's date on the top. So I'm like, okay, fresh from the Monria page, fresh at the top of the list on their Facebook, and it says today's date at the top. So I'm like, oh, sick, this is a new Monria sale. And then I just skipped to the end of the article and read who bought it. But then I was like, oh, I should have read the fucking whole thing in detail because like two sentences in, it fucking was like, oh yeah, by the way, this is an old post. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like right at the top. Why would you have today's date? Like, isn't that a little bit misleading? Well, I think what McCormick was saying is that Mindark in general does this all the time. Where they'll like have really old news and they'll publish it and put today's date. And be like, oh, this is new news. And then people look into it like, holy fuck, this shit happened years ago, right? This ain't new news. So maybe that's a little bit of what Monry was up to. But I have a feeling what it really was was just the page that they had that link to automatically refreshes the date at the top of their website. So it's like even though it looks like a blog, like a, a page with a date, it's actually saying the date for the website, not the date for the article. The article date and the website date are like right next to each other, like in the same spot they normally would be. So it's a little bit fucked. So that's really what happened, and I was all pissed about the fish situation, but then after I watched the replay, it was so funny how at the beginning of the episode, I started talking about time travel and stuff, so it almost kind of fit the theme that I got fucked up the timing so bad. <laughs> yeah, and I was thinking too, it's like, uh, it went back to what I said in the previous episode. Normally I do things in reverse, that was another one of those reverse things. It's like I made this cool time travel episode completely by accident. I didn't really mean to time travel that far. <laughs> yeah, I even posted in the comments too. It's like, isn't that the way time travel usually goes? You end up time traveling way farther than you anticipated. <laughs> All right, what is going on? I tried to lay in on Calypso and now I'm getting black screen. All right, there we go. 
Now, I haven't been to Calypso for a while. If anyone wants to hook up and buy a mankini off me in person, that would really help because I'd save some auction or, or booth sale fees. I don't think I'm going to throw any of them on the Calypso auction just because people have been putting them with no reserve bid and driving the fucking price way down. So there's really no point. Maybe I'll put one just because I said I wouldn't. <laughs> Boy, what a ride this morning. <laughs> That's I notice when I do news broadcast in the early morning before I've had a bowl. It's like my shows end up sounding just like Alex Jones. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck. Maybe I should really have something to eat and smoke a bowl before I fucking get all riled up like that. <laughs> but who knows, maybe I'll do it occasionally just for a, a more action-packed episode. <laughs> Now, I guess I should ask you guys, when I do episodes of podcasts and shows and stuff, do you like it better when I'm like kind of like having a few vapes and mellowed out? Or do you prefer it when I'm sober and just fucking reaming like hardcore energy? <laughs> now, it is kind of nice not to smoke weed and get that boost of hardcore energy. It's like I noticed when I stopped smoking weed for like six months i no longer get that boost of like energy from not smoking weed so it is almost like a roller coaster you have to go way up and down in order to notice the effects and i don't think that's healthy they always talk about body chemistry and saying like normally if you keep your body chemistry level that's like the ideal healthiest if you start rocketing up and down with like sugar spikes or adrenaline spikes it's i don't know if it is well Science will debate it, but I don't think it's that great to fucking be skyrocketing up and down. All right, yeah, let's cover the action that I had on the auction. I noticed a whole bunch of auction action, and I didn't even talk about it. Yet. I didn't even check, so so let's see what it is. I'll put the background a little bit darker, maybe, so you guys can see too. Oh, it doesn't matter. It has a border. Duh. <laughs> I swear it's the vaporizer. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> yeah, we got all this PvP shit. I've got an existing bid on the metal residue. So I'm hoping that this guy, Mad 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 Maniac, will be like, shit, I don't want to wait a week for this metal residue, and he'll just place a higher bid and get it. Because really, it doesn't cost that much to increase the bid, man. <laughs> no, and another what might happen too, is someone else will place a bid. And once he sees that there's a bid against the metal residue he wants, he'll just bid higher and outbid them. So I'm hoping for a second bid. If anyone wants to help me out with that. <laughs> no, and it sucks. I probably did too many videos on the Mankini. A lot of people are crafting it now. So the fucking tiger eye price is just skyrocketing. My bid of 47 got outbid by 51. I should have just paid the 51 and got it, but really I want to ship it to another planet, so I'd like to bid on the auction while I'm off world and then get it shipped for two ped. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna craft a whole bunch of them on Rock Tropia, because that's where I get the Hall of Fames for crafting clothes. There was no point really can crafting on Next Island because I already looted all the best prints as far as I know. Unless there's some more. <clears throat> Alright, and I had a bunch of new subscribers. I don't know, I'll bring up that screen at the end of the video maybe and show everyone who's been subscribing. Alright, what else did I have to do here? Oh yeah, wanted to pick up some things that I purchased on auction. I figure instead of bitching about people selling them dirt cheap on auction, I'd just fucking buy them. <laughs> so I actually do have more than one copy of the Mankini now, and I didn't get it by crafting, I just went the whole road of buying it on auction. I'm kind of praying that the Mankini stop being released on Next Island so that we can start gate raging or increasing the price of this print. As we can see right now, they're still under 15 and people keep undercutting. So it's like, I don't know guys, 
Most of these people that bought it for dirt cheap, guess who it was? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't plan on selling these prints cheap. So if anyone else still has them, you guys can raise the price a little if you want. It'll help you, help me. <laughs> or you could just keep putting them for sale cheap and guess who's going to be buying them. <laughs> no, I shouldn't keep doing that because really if you the mankini print ends up with thousands of them then i'll be buying them cheap but they'll just keep dropping cheaper so and technically i'll get fucked that way not in a good way <laughs> so like i don't mind when people are fucking me over as long as it's in a good way <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that was what I was going to say. I had a whole bunch of, or not a whole bunch, a few viewer questions, so I'll, I'll cover some of those next. But before we do that, let's get a message from the sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. <laughs> folks the joys of recording all in one cut <laughs> all right so yeah let's get on with the viewer questions the viewer question was can you talk more about the deeds I think that was the question fuck now I'm gonna have to open it to remember no sorry guys I hope my fucking bad memory doesn't annoy everyone I know it annoys the shit out of me <laughs> now I've tried the whole cutting back on cannabis and see if the lag ends yeah, so I cut out cannabis after my concussion to see if it would help improve my memory, and it only slightly did. And the amount of fucking body aches I was getting from not consuming cannabis really wasn't worth it. But I am planning on, once I get fucking less body aches, to give cutting off cannabis completely for at least a few months another try. See how it does with the memory issues. Now, I've started to take supplements that boost memory, like uh, stuff that you can only get in animals that rewires your whole brain that vegans can't get to what is it d d3 whatever's in sunlight and then there's the omega-3 the one that's in fish and like salmon trying to get more of that and i actually noticed a boost of it right away it's kind of surprised like that whole uh who's it anna hathaway she went vegan for a long time i can't remember why but she said she was at a restaurant and for some reason she ate salmon and it was like the first time she consumed anything not vegan in like years. She was like, holy fuck, her whole brain just rebooted. It's like the amount of chemicals that you get from salmon to help rebuild your brain is like so crucial. That if you start cutting out well, fucking all salmon, you're going to pay the price. And it may not be immediately. Like some people I noticed, like even myself, when you're young and you fast, you got so much in your body's reserves, like your liver and shit. That once you run low, you're not going to run low immediately. It's like you can keep fasting and fasting for quite a while. Some people can fucking do it for years. They have so much built up in their organ reserves. Alright, so here we got a question from Daniel. He's asking, can I ask your opinion on deeds and shares? And it's like, yeah, like, I highly recommend not just my archive, but the person who I learned well, I didn't learn about it from, but I thought covered it best with Serial Overdrive. So if you want to check out his channel, he does a whole episode on deeds. And he goes into it like fucking, like I'm talking scientific breakdown, fucking hardcore, cool shit. So, no, I always love the scientific, like more sober approach to things. <laughs> Ironically, that I'm always using a vaporizer, but no, it's like the, the two sides of a coin. You want to see both sides, right? Like the scientific approach and the fucking... High as fuck approach. <laughs> or shamanic approach. The partying approach. <laughs> now, so I'll go into my opinions, what happened in my history with deeds, what ones I liked and what ones I disliked. Here we have the Calypso Land Deeds. These were the first deeds that ever launched in all of the Entropy universe. And this was right around the time where I was actually still a non-depositor, like Serial Overdrive. I was doing the same thing as him. I'm like, I want to see if I can make it really far in this game, collect tons of pet without ever depositing. So at that point, I was uh, 
doing the sweat trade uh, what was it at knees back in the day it was knees and another place so I'll have to look up the teleporter now so back in those days I was doing the sweat trade and I had recently just made it up to 1m sweat so I was currently at that situation buying and reselling 1 million sweat a day and the fucking profit was ridiculous I was buying it for 2 pet a K or no 2 point yeah I was buying it for 2 pet a K getting yelled at by people for paying that price They're like it's too low it's too low and I'm like well fuck if it's too low don't sell it to me <laughs> No, I'll just sidetrack briefly. I know a lot of people get into debates over sweating, about hating sweating, and then even more so hating the sweat resellers, like the people that buy and resell sweat. And I don't think it's so much people that don't sweat that hate on it, but sweaters, they tend to really hate on the resellers. Yeah, LD is what the sweating location was called back in the day. This is, I don't know if uh, Shire was playing or Gale Scorpion. This is where I, I think I first met the Jaguar Spirit Guild. It was Lamian District. They used to have really good sweating there. It was the Alophils. Those really tall creatures with long legs. Sort of look like, I don't know, giant elephants or a hybrid between an <laughs> elephant and a giraffe. Anyways, those alophils, before they modified them, they were good for sweating. And we used to always sweat there and at, uh, what was I saying, knees. So anyways, I was buying and reselling sweat. What I would usually do is go to the smaller sweat areas, buy up all the sweat, then go to knees, buy it up, keep going back and forth. And then eventually I would get enough sweat, I would go to twin and try to sell it. But you may have heard in my previous videos, it's like, Doing that, like reselling sweat on auction, wasn't really the best plan because then I realized that, or no, not auction, buying and reselling at Twin wasn't the best plan because I could just use the auction instead. And people are going to argue, oh yeah, sell your vibrant sweat at 1.5k. This is one of my favorite ads. I think this is from Entropia Partners. Yeah, it is. No, I noticed that on my Entropia Partners page. Is there buying sweat right now for 1.5? So I was like, holy shit, we should really see the sweat price go from 1 pet a k back closer to two again because now all the crafters that want sweat are going to have to pay more than 1.5 because if they don't everyone will just sell it to entropia partners instead yeah so that's what i was getting at like the whole thing was buying and reset reselling sweat if you're a beginner hating on those people just think of this for a second like the price of sweat is determined by how many people are buying it. So the more and more players that you can get to buy sweat, the fucking price keeps going up and up and up. So that's what happened to me when I was a sweat reseller. I actually kind of liked it when people made fun of the resellers. Because I was like, sweet, the more people bash and make fun of the resellers, the resellers get nervous and stop buying sweat. So then I was like, I was the only person buying sweat left. <laughs> so I was like, man, those people criticizing the sweat resellers were actually killing all the people that were coming and offering a higher price for sweat than me. <laughs> See what I mean about the path, the fucking, or good intentions paving the path or road to hell? See, those people bitching at the sweat resellers had the good intention of saying, hey, if we get rid of these cheap-ass sweat resellers, it'll raise the price. But what they really didn't realize is by doing that, it made it easier for me to buy it cheaper. <laughs> oh, God, I miss the sweat reselling days. Some days I think, like, if... The price of sweat ever got reasonably stable, I might get back into it just for the fun of it. It's like, man, you meet so many new players, you get a whole bunch of people yelling and screaming at you. <laughs> now, I guess I should kind of disclose a little bit of a secret about why I like to argue with people, not just on like in podcast or in general, like on Facebook, I tend to argue and bitch with people a lot. Or not, well, I try not to bitch, just argue. But anyways, it's like uh, my family has this little thing where it's like, 
it's like a family history of people getting dementia if they like do things that are too like docile like watching tv or just like sitting around not exercising their brains so it's like in order for me like to keep my health going i really can't just sit around and watch tv and stuff all day or i'll fucking get dementia really quick like i'm talking like 40s 50 year old quick <laughs> So I have to fucking argue and constantly like keep my mind active. So that's why I actually I'm borderline trolling a bit on Facebook and stuff. <laughs> no, that's kind of how my fucking uncle situation is right now too. Like he's not very old and he's got dementia so bad. It's like he can't even like eat and feed himself. So it's really bad. Now I should have had like a little bit of a clue that that might happen. Like our family is just starting to realize that this was happening recently. Like a few of my relatives died young and no one ever really put a finger on what caused it. <clears throat> no, so my grandpa, or not gran grandpa, grandma, the one who had the dream thing, I was like, you know when they usually say if you have some sort of gift or ability, there's something bad that's happened that sort of caused it? Well, I was looking into like ancient legends about King Solomon and he had the same dream thing as my grandma. Where he could like do the dream psychic stuff and made him a real popular king. But there was a catch. People couldn't put a finger on it why, but whatever was giving, or I guess they didn't know at the time. Oh man, this tastes good. I'll get into the Arcadia Deeds in a sec next. Or I'll finish the Calypso Land Deed story. That's probably a better idea. <laughs> No, so anyways, yeah, maybe I won't get into the dreaming stuff too much more. I'll finish that in another episode. It has nothing to do with me forgetting what I was talking about. <laughs> Alright, so, we got the Calypso land deeds. Yeah, and I was buying and reselling the sweat, raising money, and I was like, I raised enough money with my sweat to just buy one deed. I was like, I reached the point in the game at that point where I realized that I could make a fair bit of money without even depositing. And it didn't take that long. Buying and reselling stuff, you can see your money start skyrocketing pretty quick. And uh, so I was realizing, like, at this point, I want the land deeds. And it was like being offered the opportunity to buy a share of a fucking casino. Because we all know, like, anyone who plays Entropia, technically it's not a casino. But, like, really, it is a casino. <laughs> Yeah, so I was always thinking, like, all I've always, my whole life, I was like, fuck, I wish I could buy shares of a casino. Like, I was like, man, if you could just buy shares in a casino, you would break in money. So that's what I was thinking when Calypso Land Deeds came out. I was like, holy shit, we have the first opportunity to buy shares in a casino. And there was a lot of debate, too, about the interest rate on these Calypso Land Deeds, if it was worthwhile. I'll get more into that. So, the, once the Calypso land deeds came out, Mindark put a price on them of, I believe, a thousand ped. So, it was a thousand ped to buy Calypso land deeds. And when typical Mindark style, the way they sold the land deeds was really complicated in the auction. I think they had it so that you could only buy them by going up to global auction. And what happened was, a lot of people, like I said, the whole teleporter issue is we fucking, a lot of people play this game and they don't realize how these drop down menus work. So it prevents them from going to places like space stations or anywhere that has a fucking drop down menu that you have to access. Well, these same people, when it came time to fucking buy the Calypso land deeds, they couldn't figure out how to open the global auction. So guess what started happening? People bought Calypso land deeds from the global auction and then place them for sale, and guess where? They put them for sale in the regular deed section. And you know what the difference in markup was? I think like 500 ped. So for I don't know how long, like weeks or even, maybe hopefully just days, people were buying them from the global auction, reselling them on the estate page, and they were selling like fucking hotcakes. Like I know this one guy in my guild, he's like, holy shit, man, I bought and resold a thousand Calypso land deeds today with a 500 ped markup on each one. 
<laughs> I was like, holy fuck, man, Mind Arc is retarded in a good way. <laughs> It's like, so here Mindark was trying to make money off selling the clips of land deeds and they fucking screwed themselves because they put it in the global auction. Meanwhile, resellers were making all the money. They're just buying them from the global auction, reselling them to the other players that couldn't figure out how to use the drop down menu, the thousands of players that can't. So <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that was quite the ordeal. And then uh, after that whole ordeal happened with clips of land deeds, more fun started to happen. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm going to try to stop laughing so people can understand what the fuck I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, like what's the point of doing a podcast if you just laugh the whole time? It's like, yeah, I can't understand it, no one else can. <laughs> it's like, good luck YouTube algorithm, hopefully you can translate it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll make that the title of this video. It'll be the Clips of Landy discussion. I don't think I'll have time to finish anything else. You can tell I used to be in talk radio because I can take one story that's like so short and talk about it for fucking hours. You know, the other hosts sometimes would just be like, hey, Leland, what is this? And then sit back <laughs> and they have the rest of the night off. <laughs> it's like, can you give us our opinion on this short topic? It's like two hours later. <laughs> All right, so what else happened with Eclipse of Land Deeds? Oh yeah, people started to debate whether or not the interest rate that they pay, let's see, what is it? So the Eclipse of Land Deeds have all this information. I think there used to be a fucking, well, re projected return on investment of 20%. <laughs> so what happened was there was a fucking debate that started in the game about whether or not 20% is a good interest rate. <laughs> now, to be fair, a lot of the people in Entropia that were arguing that that isn't a good in interest rate hadn't actually, I guess, opened savings accounts in real life and noticed that interest rates are around 3% if you're fucking lucky. <laughs> like, I have an interest rate of 3%, but I had to lock in and all these other fucking conditions in order to get a higher rate so i was like holy fuck man like how is anyone seriously arguing that 20 percent isn't a good return rate and then <laughs> so time was going on like that and people were actually raising steam with this argument saying that it wasn't a good investment rate at 20 percent <laughs> it's like let's let's hear that again it's like there was a debate in Entropia, the 20% was not a good interest rate, and that was winning the debate. <laughs> Man, I almost feel like I could get a, a Kawhi letter to laugh out of that one. <laughs> but anyways, like, uh, so that debate picked up so much steam that people started like fucking mass selling off their Calypso land deeds for less than the thousand ped that they were being sold by Mindark. So now was Mindark not only fucked that they had their deeds for sale on the global auction for a thousand ped and that people were selling it on the auction for hire and making money, but now it completely flip flopped where now people are still buying them from the auction, but now because the Calypso land deeds were selling for less than the thousand ped. So as soon as that fucking whole debate came and they dropped like around 800 ped each, I'm like, I can't fucking watch this retarded in a good way. <laughs> Shit happen anymore. Because like, I'm like, I'm taking my fucking credit card that was like, I can't remember, I was paying like 30% interest rate on it, I think. So I took that credit card and fucking maxed it out and just deposited everything into Entropia. And yeah, you can imagine, I didn't tell any of my friends or family. Like, can you imagine telling your friends? I was tempted to tell my buddies at work, but I'm like, man, if I tell my buddies at work, I'm going to be the laughing stock of the fucking workplace. <laughs> this guy invested all of his fucking money from credit cards into a fucking video game. <laughs> So 
So you can imagine, like, I don't know, I think I was able to deposit around $2,000 US. And I just fucking tanked it all into buying Calypso land deeds at 800 ped each. I think I had over 20, somewhere around there. And I was like, I have a feeling that these Calypso land deeds are going to be worth more than 800 ped one day. <laughs> So thank God, as time progressed, I think people realize the Calypso land deed interest is fucking crazy high, right? Like, 20%? That's fucking, like, well, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Yeah, so it's in between 6 and 7 times higher than the fucking bank interest will pay you. I think the only way you can find an interest rate higher than Calypso land deeds is some fucking, like, Maybe drug runners, smuggling. <laughs> no, not that I would know anything about that. Fuck. And then, uh, what else? Mm. Yeah, what else? I guess, yeah, you could do some high-risk stock investments. Yeah, if you were gambling on the stock market, that would definitely fucking... That would rival the clips of land, dude. So I guess technically those people are right. If you compare high-risk stock trading to clips of land, deeds, then you could fucking have a comparable interest rate maybe even way higher probably with the stocks but so that's that's the deal right like so calypso land deeds were technically actually way better and then oh yeah as i got older i fucking even noticed a new catch is like people have never owned savings accounts or investments or comparing it to calypso land deeds might not even notice that we actually pay income tax on fucking our investments so really if you compare it all the money that you're going to be making at a bank at 3% interest also gets a fucking deduction of income tax. So in this income tax deduction, depending how much you make, can be up to 80% in Canada. Yeah, that fucking free healthcare we get costs 80% of your fucking income. And in most cases won't even cover a fucking band-aid. <laughs> no, I shouldn't get too into OHIP. Like, OHIP I loved when it was new and fresh and everything wasn't corrupt. But after it went fucking down the toilet, it got fucking shit fast. That's why I think people in the U.S. are lucky. The like people that are saying they wanted Obamacare are fucking right in a way because it would be good in the first few years. It's just when people start abusing it like a decade later, that's when it would fucking tank your economy. And drive the fucking price of healthcare through the roof and offer almost nothing in return. <laughs> Now, technically, the way you can get free healthcare in Canada is if you have a surgery that costs a shitload of money that a doctor could do and bill to OHIP. That's when they'll give it to you for free. But anything else that there's no huge profit margin on, you got to pay out of your pocket. So it's like, and that pocket price is fucking inflated like crazy because of the whole fucking other people getting it free under paid insurance or other different types of insurance. Now, the whole fucking insurance deal pisses me off. But anyways, let's get back to Entropia. So, that was the deal with Calypso Land Deeds and why I highly recommended them. And I still do recommend them, although I don't even own one myself now. There's one good and bad thing that fucked the Entropia universe with Calypso Land Deeds. Is it screwed the value of everything else. Because you know how you can go to, what is it, the other deeds... I don't know, I'm trying to open the deeds and it just fucking won't let me. So I'm just going to open it and reclose it. You sons of bitches. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have to reboot the game. And I bet you it's just my computer doing this and everyone else is thinking, God, my computer has never had any of these glitches. <laughs> so anyways, if you buy, say, like a, a Calypso land area, see if they have any for sale. Now, say there was, like, one of those Omegaton areas, or what are those? Fuck, I can't remember the shit anymore. <laughs> if you go to those outdoor land areas, OLA 41 or 42, one of the places that you can buy with deeds, before, when you own that investment, you didn't have anything to compare it to. So it's like, say I owned... Do they even name them that way anymore? Well, say I own the, the Royal Club. And it was collecting so much revenue from people mining on it. And I can set the tax and all that shit. So I have a certain amount of ratio of how much profit I'm gaining from owning it. From the return on the investment. 
like those uh, globals and stuff, any of the tax that you collect. But you have to weigh that return on the investment on how much you paid for the, the land. Like say I paid 100,000 ped to buy Royal Club and it was returning me 100 ped a week. So now I can compare that to what would happen if I bought Calypso land deeds with that same amount of money, like the 100,000 100, ped. So if I bought 100,000 ped of those Calypso land deeds and started weighing the fucking 20% return investment, all of a sudden that amount could be like, say, 5,000 ped a month or whatever, or a week or whatever that other value I used to compare. So you'd be like, holy shit, now owning that land area in comparison to Calypso land deeds is a fucking ripoff because my 100,000 return investment is only bringing in, say, quarter of what Calypso land deeds are. So I think in a way that kind of fucked the value of owning a lot of the big ticket items in Entropia because now you had to weigh them against the Calypso land deed ratio. So I think that's why a lot of landowners in Entropia are like, fuck, I'm not owning like twin or I'm not owning knees or something anymore because that money that I could use from owning it or buying it or selling it on auction I could buy way more clips of land deeds and get way more revenue than I was owning that land and I weigh that same sort of thing with everything in Entropia now like when I buy a shopkeeper it's like does that what is it 4,000 ped for the shopkeeper weigh against how many what I could buy two clips of land deeds and then I have to weigh like how fast is my shopkeeper selling stuff compared to how fast of a return I'd be getting just from letting it collect from deeds. So there is quite a bit of fucking debates that the whole deed situation created, but I kind of like them. It's a lot of strategy to think about. That's the one thing I love about playing Entropia is it does keep my mind sharp compared to like watching TUE. I shouldn't say I'll never watch TV. Like, if other people are around and I can still interact with them, then I'll break down and watch TV. And that's why I haven't actually been listening to podcasts as much as I used to. Sorry, everyone. I used to be viewers of everyone's Entropia's channel and watch it religiously. No, and it's not all doom and gloom either. Like, I was looking at some of the latest medical research uh, on dementia and stuff, and a lot of scientists, well not a lot, a few scientists in Turkey have actually made breakthroughs with different light waves shining into the brain. It's able to break up plaque and calcium buildup. So who knows, maybe within my lifetime I won't even have to worry about it and shit will work out anyways. Right, like you gotta be optimistic in life, you don't wanna just anticipate fucking doom and gloom. <laughs> Yeah, so that's some more of the fucking Calypso information and shit. Now, should I discuss maybe other deeds? Got about 10 minutes of the show left. Yeah, so I could touch a little bit on the how some of the other deeds went. I think Arcadia deeds, what did they originally sell for? Someone can put it in the chat. I'll guess and say it was originally 50 ped each. So, same thing happened when Arcadia Underground deeds came out. I'm like, I'm going to stock up on quite a few of them and hope that the value increases and it did but not as much like you can tell Arcadia land deeds are a cheaper investment so the more the more they increase like what are they at 80 now oh they're all the way down to 70 almost should stock up holy shit they were selling at 60 maybe it's because of the other deeds yeah for a while you can see that the Arcadia Underground Deeds were trading at around 80 ped, like you can see there, for a little bit. But I think every time more Deeds come out on the market, it sort of balances it out, because then people have to weigh how much you make from each different type of Deed compared to how much they cost. And then that ratio determines which is the best Deed to buy. Now, I don't know if anyone noticed the, the shady stuff that happened with the clips of land deeds. I should get into a little bit of the... It's probably wrong, but I'll just discuss it anyway in case maybe it's right. My channel will be known as the fucking... The fucking <laughs> wrong information about Entropia. 
It's like, if you ever wanted to learn everything that's wrong about Entropia, watch mine. <laughs> or not what's wrong with Entropia, about useful information, or useless information that isn't correct about Entropia. <laughs> No, but anyway, so yeah, when the deeds came out at 50, they went up to 80. I was buying and reselling those for a while. Oh yeah, and then I had my whole story about the, the Arcadia Underground Dealer. I think that was my episode where I was talking just about shops, the first episode. So you can jump into that if you want to hear how the Arcadia sales fluctuated up and down. And how Arcadia started fucking themselves over by selling the deeds in a stupid way. And I managed to take, not exploit it, but sort of just use it <laughs> it wasn't really an exploit i swear it's like what happened was if you didn't see that episode and you don't want to rewatch the whole thing is that uh the arcadia underground deeds were sold at a dealer and they put the dealer in the underground and i coincidentally happened to buy the shop right next to it <laughs> and then i started reselling the deeds cheaper than what they were selling them for so their deed seller wasn't able to sell as much as i was <laughs> But then eventually they got rid of the, the Calypso dealer or Arcadia Underground dealer and just sold them normally because they realized that the person who owned the booth could just out, out, undercut them. Yeah, if they were smart, maybe they wouldn't have put that dealer next to a shop. <laughs> My shop especially. <laughs> no, I appreciated Arcadia doing that. I shouldn't bash them. Like, thank you guys. Why would I bash you for helping me? <laughs> In coincidentally okay so the last set of deeds is I don't even really like this whole new deed system to be honest at first I thought I did but I fucking miss being able to take the deeds and put them for sale in my shops so they have this new thing called the entropy exchange you can buy and sell deeds that have no actual deed now it's just like a virtual stock market system the same way Never Die was setting up everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mindark and Never Die collaborated on this system. So anyways, maybe at some point Mind or Never Die was going to link this to his Never Die wallets. But something's happened with the Never Die wallets and I'll probably do a whole episode on that. And if anyone was the investors that got screwed by the Never Die wallet and they want to come on that episode, I invite anyone to be on my show. But I give priority to my patrons. So if there's any backlog of people who wanted to be on my show, Patreons will get a, a bump up ahead in the line. Normally I shouldn't do that, but I was figuring like, God, if I'm collecting patron money from people, I should at least offer them something decent. But maybe in the future I'll try to find some way of giving patrons something better than that, and then I won't have that queue system line, but we'll see how it works for now. Really, I don't have backup log, so people should be okay. Well, I shouldn't say that. There is a whole backlog of people. I just haven't reached everyone. Mm. No, I'm not the greatest with uh, using fucking communications. Ever since my concussion, it's even made it worse. So, a lot of times I'll send messages to people and forget, or I'll get a message and think I've answered it and forget. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, so if there's ever awkward silences where you don't hear back from me in messages, you can just message me back multiple times. I'll probably forget. But I'm not doing it to try to piss you off and forget you because I don't like you or something. Alright, so that's a little bit of the deeds with Ancient Greece and Crystal Palace Station. I'll, before we end the show quick, I'll touch what happened with those. The Crystal Palace Station deeds went for sale dirt cheap. Of course, Mindark really sucked at advertising that these deeds were going to go for sale. And the person who put them on didn't anticipate, I assume, how many were going to sell. Or that the low price was going to make them fly off the hook. So, same thing. There was a little bit of press. Hardly anyone heard about the, 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 the Palace Station the space station fucking deeds <laughs> and after that what happened was oh yeah then people started bitching the few people that did hear about it were like oh these fucking crystal palace station deeds they suck ass not in a good way if there is a good way for that <laughs> i hope not 
<laughs> but anyways, yeah, so they were calling them, making fun of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, when people are making fun of them, people like me again are just fucking tanking, buying them like crazy. I only managed to get 25 because unfortunately at that time, my ped roll was at the lowest point possible. So it's like, fuck, I could only afford to buy 25. I really should have used my credit card and just fucking tanked that again. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, I never finished the credit card story. What happened with that? But yeah, so the Calypso, the space station deeds, <laughs> they fucking skyrocketed in value and sold out right away. So it's like they were off the sold out. Everyone who bought them like doubled their money, I think. I can't remember. Maybe it was quartered their money, something like that. So yeah, that's that's what happened with the pilot space station deeds. So I was hoping that same thing was going to happen with the ancient Greece deeds. What do you know? That's when my fucking bankroll was high. So I was able to fucking tank in, what is it, 3,000 ped of just ancient Greece deeds. I'm like, oh, hopefully I can even sell them. But it sucks. They haven't been able to fucking advertise these ancient Greece deeds on other planets pages. Seems like the only page that advertises is the next island one. So people just aren't buying these deeds. So I'm hoping maybe if I talk about them more, we can sell them out and have the value go up. If anyone wants to help out with that, they could go to this Entropy Exchange and buy them. And to be honest, I don't even remember how to get into the Entropy Exchange. I think it's something to do with the, the action library. They hid it in there or something. So yeah, maybe someone wants to make a tutorial video on how to set up the Entropy Exchange so that you can just click the icon. Like, I don't know. If I was Mind Arc, I'd have this Entropy Exchange icon, like fucking huge, and I'd have it like right next to some icons that are used commonly by everyone. So when you log into the game, you'd be like, oh, what's this giant fucking Entropy Exchange icon? You'd be like, oh, I can buy deeds and shit. But no, the way they have it set up is hidden right now. I don't know. Typical Mind Arc. I should get McCormick to come on and talk about that. <laughs> No, if McCormick's listening, I don't know if he subscribed. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Bastard. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, if he, if he did subscribe and he's listening, I hope he comes on the show. And if anyone else knows him, try to message him and bug him to come on the show if he says no. If he says yes and say thank you for coming on the show, don't bug him. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't bug him either way. <laughs> I should say that if I want to get him on the show. <laughs> Now, if anyone's starting their own podcast up for Entropy or other shit and otherwise in general, I encourage you to try to get guests on your show. And it may seem awkward at first, but you'll be surprised how many times you invite guests that are like way out of your league, so to think. And all of a sudden they just say yes. And then you've got this fucking amazing guest on your show. And then your channel starts getting fucking crazy views and subs. As soon as you start adding in fucking guest names. Because what will happen is, is... Say you have like Never Die on your show. And then anyone goes into Google and types in Never Die or a YouTube search. The first link sorted by date will be the last interview done with Never Die. So if mine's the most recent one, mine will come at the top of the YouTube list. So people bitch about the YouTube algorithm, how it's so fucking corrupt and stuff. So I don't have any issues with it. There's definitely ways that anyone could use it to their advantage. So what you want to do, like say there's... There's pages that you can see that are common searches of like people will type a guest. And so you can get like a list of guests that are popular that people type into search engines and then invite them on your show. Then all of a sudden, boom, all the people that are typing that name will get your video first on YouTube. So that's like a little bit of a tip too. And I'll finish up, uh, did I finish the Ancient Greece? Yeah, I did. So that's good. And the only proof I have of this actually working is when I got Billy Carson on my show. If you guys haven't heard of Billy Carson, he's like a huge fucking celebrity. Not only in the basketball community, because he was the coach of the, the Olympic team, or the women's Olympic team. And he was also on uh, like all the paranormal shows, TV shows, Gaia TV and stuff. And he's fucking like, he has his own space agency. Sort of like an Elon Musk type of guy. He made a whole shitload of cash from different things that he invented. I think it was a uh, software for, oh yeah, it was software for tracking the development of NBA players. So it's like, uh, what was it? What do they call those things? Scouts that go around scouting players. 
they all of a sudden need an app to help scout players. And that was Billy Carson. He made the app for that. So he made serious cash. And he's also into the veganism. So that's why I try not to bash veganism. There are some people who are pulling it off. It doesn't seem like I know many people that are pulling it off, but there are some. The only thing I worry about Billy Carson pulling it off is his willpower is fucking insane, right? Like, he has the willpower to make companies, fucking software, to be a coach. It's like, his willpower would probably be enough that he could eat nothing and survive. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, some people have that willpower. Like, they make great UFC fighters, too. Or almost bad for themselves, because they'll just never quit. <laughs> Their willpower is like they could be half dead and they'll still like rise from the grave and just come back. <laughs> That's one of the things I liked about Jesus and all of his prophecies. That was his thing. It's like the power of belief was so strong that it could literally do anything. It wasn't like he was using magic or something. It was just like, nope. It's like when people believe something, that's how it happens. I don't know if belief is magic. <laughs> it almost does seem like a science. Because they have the observer effect, right? It's like when you believe you can see something, that's when you see it. Now, I guess to finish up the show, there's one last thing I wanted to say about the deeds can't remember what it is so I'll probably do it in the next episode oh yeah in the other next episode I'll be taking all this shit that I bought off the Calypso auction and I'll be dropping some of it off at FOMA so that'll probably be next episode and when I get to the FOMA place what I'll do is I'll start adding my shop locations in the show description so just in case anyone isn't even familiar with where my shop is they can get to it by checking the links below Yeah, so I guess before I start packing this bowl, I'll finish up the show. Now, I really appreciate everyone for watching every day. I noticed I got at least five or six hardcore daily viewers, and I really appreciate it. Just for you guys watching, I'll keep making daily videos. And I'll try to keep them more accurate and check my sources in the future so I don't get the Monria debacles. Although it was kind of cool how the whole time travel thing worked out. <laughs> Yeah, big shout out to the guys that bought Monria, what is it, in 2016. I was always wondering what was the deal with all the fucking St. Patrick's Day theme. Like, have they all of a sudden become raging alcoholics and they're all into pubs now? <laughs> but no, it turns out that there was Irish people. Yeah, and I love Irish accents. I think some of my family is from that region long, long, long ago. That's how I got the green eyes, probably. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Monria gets more success. I know I was kind of bashing them, saying they've been downhill, but I shouldn't say that. Bonnie's been doing some cool streams and stuff there, and they've been doing those St. Patrick's Day giveaways. The only thing I was thinking, if any of the people know the people from Mindark or the people behind the, the planet Monria, if they could all of a sudden start adding in some St. Patrick's Day themed blueprints, like maybe a St. Patrick's Day vehicle or a St. Patrick's Day shirt that I can start crafting. So, that'd be sick. If that ever happens, maybe they can let me know and I'll fucking start fishing for prints there. I'm actually going to Monria and going to be doing some crafting episodes to show everyone anyways. So, maybe by the time I get all that shit set up on Rocktropia shops and at FOMA, I can go to Monria after that. So, man, I got a long plan of episodes. You can imagine by the way I drag them out, it's going to be like two weeks from now by the time I actually get to Monria. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so yeah, everyone, hope you can keep watching, sharing, liking. Make sure to check out the links below. Got tons of shit, tricks like Entropia Partners, and how you can break in extra ped into Entropia. God, if some people can start helping by doing that, that'd be awesome. Like, my, I've got a referral link, so I get a small percentage of it. And when you guys sign up, you can even share it too. And I have a whole bunch of videos that, in my archive about different withdrawals. Some of them are even linked to Entropia Partners, and you can get paid to watch that video. So yeah, if you want to watch it and figure out how to do it, just log into Entropia Partners and boom. Next thing you know, click the video button. First video that comes up will be showing you how to withdraw. Alright, so what else was there? 
Oh yeah, I was thinking different things, different things. Chipmunks are the big thing lately. Apparently there's an invasion of chipmunks and an invasion of moths. So if there's a chipmunk playing with a moth from this brutal invasion, and it happens to throw remains of it and it gets right into your vaporizer, you vaporize fucking moths and you're like, oh god, you fucking chipmunk. <laughs> Give the video a dislike, but if that doesn't happen, please help with likes. I really love the likes because sometimes I do get discouraged and my show gets no likes. <laughs> Alright, see you guys later and catch you later. Oh yeah, for fuck's sakes, never buy the products from our sponsor because it will ruin your life.